This unit will cover sonographic characteristics of the ovary and the adnexa. On ultrasound, hemorrhagic ovarian cysts demonstrate several different appearances as the cyst evolves. Typically, the initial appearance of a hemorrhagic cyst will demonstrate a smooth wall with anechoic interior echoes and posterior acoustic enhancement. Application of colored Doppler will display circumference flow but no flow within the cyst itself. This color Doppler image demonstrates peripheral flow around the cyst wall. This is another ultrasound of a hemorrhagic ovarian cyst with an anechoic interior, smooth wall, and posterior wall enhancement. Again, note the color Doppler demonstrates peripheral flow and no flow within the cyst itself. During the evolution of a hemorrhagic cyst, the appearance may change with the demonstration of fibrin strands which appear as fishnet, lacy reticular, or a cobweb pattern. Again, there would be no detectable flow with color Doppler. The cysts generally resolve within about 8 weeks. The evolution of a subacute ovarian hemorrhagic cyst may demonstrate the appearance of a solid neoplasm as represented in this image. This patient is the same as the previous one, and the imaging shows the evolution of a hemorrhagic ovarian cyst that has become solid, resembling a neoplasm. The color Doppler demonstrates circumferential blood flow. Endometriomas are a type of endometriosis, where there is a presence of endometrial glands and stroma within the ovary. They are also known as chocolate cysts of the ovary and have a typical ground glass appearance on ultrasound. In some rare cases, they may have a multilocular appearance. This image displays the usual appearance of endometriomas, which is characterized by a ground glass appearance and posterior acoustic shadowing. This transvaginal ultrasound image with color Doppler shows peripheral blood flow and a ground glass appearance in an endometrioma. This image also shows a typical ground glass appearance and peripheral blood flow of an endometrioma. Mature teratomas are tumors that contain three different types of cells, ectoderm, endoderm, and mesoderm. These tumors can show calcification, which appears as bone-like structures. Additionally, they may contain hair and sebaceous material. Focal or diffuse echogenic components may also be present in these tumors. Echogenic lines or dots are areas that produce acoustic shadowing while calcifications may appear like teeth or bones. Non-dependent fluid may appear hyperechoic. Mature teratomas are commonly known as dermoid cysts. They typically have a round or ovoid shape, are less than 10 cm in size, and are found on one side of the body. These cysts can have one or multiple compartments and may contain multiple tumors. Dermoid cysts are frequently located in the ovarian fossa and are surrounded by normal ovarian tissue. In this ultrasound image of a dermoid cyst, Note the calcifications which suggest bone. The echogenic lines and dots represent acoustic shadowing. Upon examination of the abdominal x-ray, a calcified structure was identified in the pelvic region. This finding suggests the presence of a mature teratoma. A mass with a mixture of brightness levels within the wall of the dermoid cyst indicates the presence of hair. This image represents a mature teratoma, dermoid cyst, with characteristics of a Rokitansky protuberance, a finding that resembles vegetation.
Ovarian fibromas can have a similar appearance to pedunculated subserosal uterine fibroids. The ultrasound appearance of fibromas can vary, and some tumors may have cystic components. Fibromas can have a round, oval, or lobulated shape. They produce stripe-like shadows and can show fluid in the pouch of Douglas. Color Doppler may indicate vascularization. Sometimes, fibromas can be mistaken for a malignancy. This ultrasound image shows a typical ovarian fibroma, a solid tumor with stripe-like attenuated echoes. In addition, fluid may be present in the pouch of Douglas. Pedunculated myomas are masses connected to the uterus by a stalk. Other myomas may also be present, but ascites is uncommon. This image demonstrates the uterus with a pedunculated myoma that is closely adherent to the uterine body. Typical features also include a vascular connecting stalk. Hydrosalpinx is when the fallopian tube is filled with clear or serous fluid. This condition can have multiple causes, but pelvic inflammatory disease is the most common. Other possible causes include adhesions from surgery, endometriosis, tubal ectopic pregnancy, and, in rare cases, cancer of the ovary or other organs. This schematic representative of hydrosalpinx demonstrates a fluid-filled fallopian tube. Hydrosalpinx can be identified through ultrasound by observing the fallopian tube wall, which can be either thin or thickened. A cogwheel appearance might also be present. Additionally, color Doppler would not show any hyperemia. Other indications include incomplete septa and the presence of fluid. This image represents a cross-section of the fallopian tube with hydrosalpinx. Note the thin fallopian tube wall and the anechoic fluid without evidence of echogenic material. In this transvaginal ultrasound, the thin-walled and anechoic fallopian tube is visible. The hyperechoic ovary with follicles is adjacent to the fallopian tube. In another transvaginal ultrasound image, Note the dilated fluid-filled fallopian tube with a thin, imperceptible wall. In this image of hydrosalpinx, the fallopian tube is a dilated and fluid-filled tube with thickened septa. This schematic demonstrates the cogwheel appearance seen in patients with hydrosalpinx. The finding is observed in the transverse view of the fallopian tube and is caused by the thickening of the mucosal longitudinal fold. This image shows a cross-section of the dilated fluid-filled fallopian tube with a thin wall, exhibiting a pathognomonic cogwheel appearance on grayscale ultrasound. A tubo-ovarian abscess is most commonly a result of pelvic inflammatory disease. The ultrasound findings may not be specific, but combined with the clinical symptoms of high white blood cell count, increased sedimentation rate, fever, and pain, ultrasound can help diagnose the condition. Color Doppler helps show increased blood flow in the area of the mass. Ultrasound is used to detect a tubo ovarian abscess which appears as a cystic, thickened, or tubular ovarian mass. The cyst may contain both solid and cystic elements, with fluid levels and septa inside them. Blood flow at the border of the mass can be detected by color Doppler. This is a transvaginal ultrasound showing a cystic and solid mass with septa, indicating a tubo-ovarian abscess. In this grayscale image of a tubo-ovarian abscess, a complex multilocular adnexal mass with marked hyperemia, echogenic fat, and free fluid are present. This is a follow-up transvaginal ultrasound with color Doppler of the same patient as before. No normal ovarian tissue is observed, and there is destruction of the fallopian tube and ovaries, resulting in necrosis or liquefaction of the ovarian tissue. The presence of multiple cystic components indicates areas of ovarian necrosis, and it is not possible to distinguish the affected fallopian tube from the ovary. Peritoneal inclusion cysts are fluid collections that are confined to specific areas near the peritoneal surfaces. 
These cysts are commonly found in women aged 18 to 89 years old, and often occur due to a traumatic injury to the structures. The cysts accumulate fluid due to the presence of adhesions, which result from a non-neoplastic reactive process. Prior history of peritoneal inclusion cysts include surgical trauma, pelvic inflammatory disease, endometriosis, and inflammatory bowel disease. Imaging parameters for peritoneal inclusion cysts include a history of trauma. Imaging findings show normal ovaries with loculated fluid within the peritoneal space. The cysts are anechoic and have thin walls. Peritoneal inclusion cysts can vary in size and have multiple septations, but they lack nodularity, hemorrhage, debris, or solid components. This transabdominal ultrasound shows a smooth-walled, non-nodular peritoneal inclusion cyst. The ovary appears normal, with small follicles near the psoas muscle. This ultrasound shows a peritoneal inclusion cyst with a smooth, thin wall and no nodules. The ovary appears normal with small follicles. On the transabdominal ultrasound, a thin-walled peritoneal inclusion cyst is visible without nodularity. Again, the ovary appears normal with small follicles. In this image of a peritoneal inclusion cyst, the ovary is suspended amongst adhesions at the periphery of the cyst. Polycystic ovary syndrome is a prevalent endocrine disorder among women, which often leads to secondary amenorrhea, hirsutism, and obesity. The syndrome occurs due to the dysfunction of the hypothalamic pituitary axis, which disrupts the metabolism of both androgens and estrogens. The ovaries become thickened and sclerotic and develop multiple peripherally located follicles. The clinical findings include infertility, irregular menstrual cycles, abnormal vaginal bleeding, excessive hair growth, and obesity. In addition, polycystic ovary syndrome may include sleep apnea, acanthosis nigricans, acne, and androgenic alopecia. The laboratory findings indicate increased luteinizing hormone, LH to FSH ratio of greater than 2, and elevated androgenic hormones. On ultrasound, there is stromal brightness and increased numbers of small follicles with bilateral ovarian enlargement and peripheral follicle distribution. MRI may be useful. These transvaginal ultrasound images demonstrate enlargement of the ovaries with multiple, small, peripherally located hypoechoic follicles and slightly increased echogenicity of the central stroma. In this transvaginal ultrasound image note the enlargement of the ovary with multiple, small, peripherally located hypoechoic follicles and slightly increased echogenicity of the central stroma. The differential diagnosis of polycystic ovary syndrome includes functional ovarian cysts, other endocrine disorders, and ovarian hyperstimulation from gestational trophoblastic neoplasia. Ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome is a condition that can occur during infertility treatment when the ovary is excessively stimulated to induce ovulation. The syndrome can also be observed when the ovary experiences increased stimulation due to gestational trophoblastic disease. This sagittal plane transvaginal ultrasound displays mild ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome with cysts within the ovary and fluid in the retrouterine space. In this transvaginal ultrasound, there is moderate ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome. Both ovaries are in the posterior cul-de-sac, and the ovaries contain several large unruptured follicles. Ovarian torsion is a condition where the ovary and fallopian tube twist or rotate, which can reduce blood flow to the ovary. This can cause acute pelvic pain. It's important to diagnose the condition early so that surgical intervention can prevent the loss of blood supply to the ovary and loss of ovarian function. Ultrasound and color Doppler are the primary imaging methods used to diagnose ovarian torsion. Both transvaginal and transabdominal ultrasounds should be used, as the sensitivity of ultrasound for diagnosis is over 80%. During the ultrasound, the area of the affected adnexa is usually tender. 
The common ultrasound findings of ovarian torsion include a displaced adnexal mass, an enlarged ovary, ovarian edema, and ascites. In addition, ultrasound may show a cystic to solid mass with possible internal hemorrhage and thin internal septa. The most common neoplasm associated with ovarian torsion is a cystic teratoma or dermoid cyst. When diagnosing ovarian torsion, color Doppler should be used to assess and compare the affected ovary to the contralateral one. Doppler findings can vary, and it is expected to see minimal venous flow. Due to the dual blood supply of the ovaries, normal arterial flow can still be observed in cases of torsion. However, if the flow is central, the ovary may still be viable, but if there is no flow on color Doppler, the ovary may not be viable. This ultrasound image shows the right ovary of a patient with ovarian torsion. The ovary appears enlarged, and there are peripheral follicles present which confirm that it is the ovary. The central ovarian stroma shows a mixed pattern of hyperechoic and hypoechoic structures. The hypoechoic areas may indicate edema or blood in the ovary. This patient, the same as the previous one, has a normal contralateral left ovary with expected size, and standard architecture featuring ovarian follicles. This is a color Doppler of the enlarged right ovary with ovarian torsion, showing only peripheral blood flow and no central flow. The normal left ovary on the right side of the image demonstrates normal primary blood flow to the ovary. Distinguishing between benign and malignant extrauterine masses with grayscale ultrasound involves pattern recognition, which is superior to other ultrasound methods. Adding color Doppler increases diagnostic accuracy and confidence. Cysts without solid components, either unilocular or multilocular, are likely benign unless there are multiple cysts within the tumor. In this case, the diagnosis may be a borderline mucinous cystadenoma. Malignant tumors usually have irregular shapes, are echogenic, and have extensive and jagged solid components. A key indicator of malignancy is the presence of papillary projections that are more than 3 mm long, extending from the cyst wall into the cyst cavity. These projections are commonly found in borderline ovarian tumors, such as adenofibromas, as well as serous and mucinous cystadenomas. The International Ovarian Tumor Analysis, IOTA, is a simple ultrasound-based system for predicting malignancy in adnexal masses. It is divided into five benign, B, features and five malignant, M, features. Unilocular tumors are compared to irregular solid tumors, and colored Doppler blood flow is used as a potential distinguishing feature. This image shows a benign smooth-walled unilocular cyst without solid components or papillary projections. This image shows a multilocular cyst with no solid elements or papillary projections, indicating it is benign. The presence of solid components and irregularities are the main characteristics of this malignant tumor. This image demonstrates papillary projections in a primary invasive ovarian cancer. This multiloculated cyst is a benign mucinous cystadenoma without any solid elements or papillary projections present. The image shows a mucinous cystadenoma with solid elements and echogenicity at the border wall. This ultrasound shows a fluid-filled, dilated fallopian tube with mixed endometrial and serous carcinoma.